All right, so you're considering making a move to Tampa, Florida. Well, here are five things real estate agents aren't telling you. So let's get right into number one, which is Florida has two seasons, indoor season and outdoor season. Now, I know you watch these pros and cons videos. This is probably not the first one that you've seen. Heck, I've done a bunch of them before, but here's what I want you to know. Most people aren't sharing the reality of what a, a Gulf Coast summer looks like. And I gotta share this story with you because I remember when I had a friend of mine say to me, he's like, hey Juan, I know you're planning on moving to Florida and we were committed, Kate and I, we were ready to pack up the family. We had made our decision and we were headed down, y'all. It was coming. And he looked right at me. He goes, Juan, have you ever experienced a Gulf Coast summer before? And when somebody asks you something with that much intent, you know what you're about to hear is probably gonna change the way you were thinking about it, right? And I remember this and he looked right at me. He said, a Gulf Coast summer is like waking up with a Labrador retriever breathing two inches from your face. And I remember sitting there and I just kind of looked up because I was thinking about that. And I've had dogs, I'm a dog guy, right? We've got Stella, who's our beautiful Doberman now. And I always had a dog when I was a kid, but I don't know about you guys. Maybe you don't have a dog, but you've had friends that have a dog. And if they've ever gotten that close up to your face, you know, you get this warm, moist, just disgusting feeling of, of this animal breathing in your face. And here's the thing, he was not wrong. When we moved down here, you know, we had our, uh, you know, rainbow colored glasses on. We were all oogly eyed. We were so excited that we had finally made the jump after 10 years of wanting to move to, to Florida. We had finally made the move and we moved down in December and it was a little bit sticky the day we actually arrived, but the weather was incredible all winter. We're like, this is amazing. Florida is so awesome. It's 75 degrees every day. There's little to no humidity. And I remember in May and it felt like uh, the Lord walked over and turned the switch on in the oven and it got warm. And Kate and I, you know, we both love to be outdoors. We're, we're physically active. We love to run. And that summer, you know, and in, in our exuberance, our, in our ignorance, right, we, we were like, let's, if we're going to sweat, we might as well just sweat all the way. So we were running at 11 or noon every single day. And my friend would be like, what are you doing down there? Like, dude, if I'm going to be, you know, miserable, I might as well just do it all the way. And we were like superheroes. Well, four years later, y'all, four years later, we have made <laughs> the shift and we have become Floridians, right? We're not trying to be running around in the middle of the day because it's dangerous, number one. Number two, we don't need to be heroes like that. Number three, it is, it gets hot. And four years into this, here's what I want to say. It is starting to get a little bit annoying. It's not the end of the world. And all of the goods tend to outweigh the three and a half months where it's just hot. And I'm talking about July, August, September, it is hot. By October, you're like, you gotta let this up because I can't do this anymore. And then November comes and it's like, again, it's like the Lord walks back over, flips the switch again. And now all of a sudden the temperature goes down and it's beautiful Florida again. And here's the thing I'll say, if you're moving from a Northern area where you're tired of the snow, you're tired of not seeing sunshine, you know, I always tell everybody, they ask me, Juan, what's the biggest difference between living, you know, up North and down South? And I tell everybody the same thing. You do not have to shovel sunshine ever. And it's sunny all the time here. So that is a huge benefit. But if anybody tells you that the summer here is, it's not that bad, that's either somebody who's lived here their entire life and hasn't experienced anything else, or someone who just literally has it fully adapted and it doesn't bother them. But I gotta tell you, we that's when we take our vacations, that's when we travel up north to the mountains, we'll go back up north to see family in Detroit. You know, we'll make our moves then, but it is hot here in the summer. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I am a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here in the Tampa Bay area. And I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the Tampa Bay area. However, you got to get hold of us, whether that's through phone call, email, text message, you can even DM me on Instagram. All of my contact information is listed down below, even with a link to my calendar. So you can schedule a time that works best to you. If you're considering making that move, or you just have questions about the Tampa Bay area and what it would be like to live here or invest in the area, please do not hesitate to reach out. All right, now let's get right into number two. So the second thing on my list is that the homes here are older. And again, that's 
kind of perspective, right? Depending on where you're coming from. I know there's some homes in the Northeast that are 150, 180 years old. I mean, there's historic homes up there. Same thing in uh, to the South and some to the West as well. Um, I know, you know, where we came from up in Detroit, we had a lot of the homes that were built up there in the 40s, 50s, and 60s because of the automotive boom, right? That makes sense. And same thing here in Florida. You know, a lot of the homes, especially when it comes to the Gulf Coast, you know, you've got homes that were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. St. Petersburg, you've got homes dating all the way back to the 19th hundreds and the same thing in Tampa proper. So, you know, we'll get a lot of phone calls say, Hey, I'd really like a brand new house, you know, in the Clearwater area, you know, and uh, I'd like it to be four bedrooms, you know, three baths, uh, open floor plan. And uh, I'd like it to be within five minutes of the water. And that's wonderful. And most people would like that, but a lot of those homes were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they're the ranch style home, so single single level, right? Um, we call them Rambler style because they all have a very low slope roof, and they're very similar in the architectural style. They're really kind of vanilla, to be honest with you, if I'm just being fully transparent. But the average home in the Tampa Bay area is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,850 square foot home, and it was built in the 70s. So when you're looking to make that move and you're thinking open floor plan, well, that didn't really exist back then. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist now, but if you're looking for a property like that, especially if you want something newer, because I'll get those phone calls, hey Juan, I want a house that was built, you know, after 2015. And that's great. But as soon as somebody says that to me, one of two things is happening. <laughs> we're either going out to the suburbs because that's where they're building all these new homes. And we're building beautiful new homes like that, but they are out in the Northern suburbs, the Eastern suburbs, and the, the, the Southeastern suburbs as well. They're not in Tampa proper unless, okay, or in, on the Gulf Coast beaches, unless they're tearing down an existing home and building up a new one. We call that a scrape and build. Well, why is that important? Well, because that's gonna change your budget because the average home in Tampa, that three to 1,850 square foot in the Tampa Bay area is right around 400,000. The closer you get to the beaches, that gets about 450. In Tampa proper, you're looking at like 380 to 360, right around in that range. But if you've got to tear one down to build up a new one, that is going to change the budget and the price point. So just be mindful that a lot of these new developments that they're building up in Pasco County, Odessa, Wesley Chapel, Apple area, Lando Lakes area, or to the east in Lithia, Fishhawk, um, Riverview, Brandon, and down to the southeast in that parish area, these are an hour to an hour and a half away from the Gulf Coast beaches. So if you came down here with that flip-flop lifestyle mindset, you're gonna be in for a little bit of a culture shock. So just be aware of that. Now, a lot of these communities are doing great jobs. Their goal is to bring the beach to the backyard. They're putting things up like these incredible lagoons. We've made an entire video on, on the Wesley Chapel Lagoon and the South Shore Bay Lagoon. Um, we can post these up here or in the links down below. They're beautiful communities. I mean, you can paddleboard in a seven and a half acre lagoon that they've built right in your backyard literally <laughs> and that's awesome but it's still a day trip to the beach essentially you got to pack up the kids or the family drive to the beach find parking it's an hour away before you know it's an hour and a half with parking and getting to the beach it just becomes a long thing but i need you to be mindful of that if you're considering making that move and the reason being again the age of the homes number one number two a lot of the properties down here originally were second homes or vacation homes there were a lot of people who lived here originally but we all know florida is a destination people want to retire here so what what else happens here is not only do you have an older home you have a lot of homes that haven't been renovated and because they're still in good shape maybe someone was a retiree and they bought it at one point and they didn't have the money to fix it up or they just didn't want to spend the money on the newest kitchens and baths and you're going to find a lot of homes have dated bathrooms dated kitchens and things like that in the area so just be mindful of that when you're making that move to the area hey if you've been online and you've been searching for properties and you see the white tiles the 12 by 12 or the 18 by 18 or you see these dated bathrooms you've seen them before and you know what i'm talking about put that in the comments below because i'm telling you right now it's the number one comment i get they're like we've seen the floor to floor because it looks the same in almost every house. So I just wanted to share that with you. Now let's get right on to number three. All right, number three on our list is traffic stinks. It really does stink, y'all. And um, depending on where you're moving from, again, perspective is everything. You're gonna come here from New York or Los Angeles and you're gonna think that it, traffic's amazing here. And I understand that. Or Chicago and you, you're gonna think, you guys don't have traffic. You know, I came from Detroit. 
uh, it was fairly moderate there, I would say. We definitely had some areas that, that were more challenging than others. But here's the thing about Tampa. We weren't built to have three and a half million people living in the Tampa metropolitan area. This area was established in the early 1900s. You know, in terms of the infrastructure, you know, it really wasn't built for that. And we've been growing at this massive pace over the last three years. Everyone has been relocating to the area. It, you know, Tampa, the secret of Tampa is out. Everybody loves the Bay. It's still very inexpensive coastally speaking we're right at national average price points on our housing it's still affordable you know so people are moving here from all over the country and what's happening with that is they're bringing their driving habits with them which sounds okay right you think we all know how to drive well you know maybe there's different uh, types of driving laws in Seattle than there is in Tampa or in you know New York there is than there is in Tampa and I want to give you the example there's what we call the Florida left down here or the Florida right. And when I when I when I'm not talking about is just making a left hand turn or right hand turn. <laughs> I'm talking about you see people who will be making a left hand turn and they'll cross three lanes of traffic to get over in that left hand turn lane. And no one uses a turn signal here. No one. It is crazy. And I'm I'm tongue in cheek right now, but like that's how it feels. And we've been here and I'm telling you right now, you gotta have your head on a swivel when you're driving here. It's not impossible. And I'm not trying to say that it, it's the worst thing in the world, but you need to be mindful of it. You've got you know, an influx of people that, that come down seasonally, right? We call them snowbirds, you know, people who live up north that come down south every winter, you know, from Canada and from the northern uh, Midwest and from uh, the Northeast as well. So they bring their driving habits down. We do have senior citizens who arrive during that time period too. And I'm not saying seniors can't drive, but let's be honest, y'all. Insurance companies charge kids and elderly people the most amount of money because they are the highest risk. That's just the reality of it, right? And we've got way more people on the road during that time period and our, our roads just weren't built for it. So we're having some challenges. I've, I've told the story before about the, the lights, right? Some of these lights, you know, the way that the intersections are set up here, you can wait three minutes before, you, before you're able to go through the intersection or make a turn. And it feels like you could knit a blanket at some of these things. I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable how long some of these lights can take. You'll look over and you see people on their phones all the time. And I laugh because I'm like, what game are they playing or what email are responding to? Because they have enough time to do it. It gets a little bit crazy. And the I-275, I-4 interchange in Tampa, you know, there's this joke that you don't let anybody in because if you do, they'll win, right? It's this unwritten rule. And it feels that way because there's so much traffic and it's congested. And if you look at the Tampa Bay area as a whole, you know, Tampa, the city, it sits on the bay. And then as you cross the bay over into Pinellas County where the Gulf Coast beaches are, there are three bridges over there. Most people don't like to travel back and forth uh, across those bridges for work because of traffic reasons. It gets really congested. There's three bridges over there I want you guys to know about. Um, you got the Courtney Campbell Causeway, which is the one at the most northern point. We'll put that on the map up here. In the middle of the bay, you've got the Howard Franklin, and they're doing this really cool revitalization project there where they're making a running, biking, and uh, walking trail all the way across the bridge there. That is really cool. Um, and then to the south, you've got the Gandhi, and that takes you from Tampa down into St. Petersburg. So you do have access. It is, you know, it's not inconvenient, but most people just don't like to travel across those bridges for whatever reason it's very interesting and hey if you're new to this channel please feel free to subscribe and click that little bell also if you know somebody who's considering moving in the area please feel free to share this video or our channel with them I'm sure that they get a ton of value they'd really appreciate it from you you could be somebody's hero and you'd be our hero too number four all of our beaches are the same I know People are gonna skewer me in the comments down below. And if you disagree, let me know down below. That's fine, but here's what I mean when I say this. There's a dirty little secret about the Gulf Coast beaches. So a couple things I wanna address right away. Tampa does not have a proper beach, okay? First of all, if it's a beach, it's in the bay. The bay is not the Gulf. Okay, so these are two different things. That's number one. Number two, the beach there in Tampa, you know, it gets very busy. Um, it's right uh, near the, the Courtney Campbell Causeway and it gets very busy on the weekend. It's hard to find a parking space. It's it's definitely, um, it can be a party zone at times. It's not all party all the time, so don't, don't think that, but it can be, right? You're sharing space with a lot of people, so be mindful of that. When you cross over Tampa Bay onto uh, into Pinellas County, where most of the Gulf Coast beaches where you and I think of, Clearwater, St. Pete Beach. These are beautiful beaches, right? 
and Clearwater has been recognized as the number one beach in America, um, you know, along with St. Pete Beach. They're always in the top 10 list fighting it out, you know, and I don't know who does the politics on these things, but you know, they're back and forth all the time. But here is the dirty little secret. And we're gonna show you right on the map here in two seconds. You know, I'm gonna have Les, my editor, pop this up here from Clearwater Beach. And remember, the Gulf Coast beaches are really a, a barrier islands, okay? Uh, P Pinellas County is a peninsula right across the bay on the, on the Gulf Coast. And we have a, a series of barrier islands that go all the way from Honeymoon Island in Dunedin, all the way down to St. Pete Beach, actually south of St. Pete Beach. But all of these beaches live they look almost identical. They're all beautiful white sugar sand beaches. They are gorgeous. The depth from the beginning of the beach to the, to the water does change. And here's what is different. So before everybody skewers me on this, the communities that are adjacent to these beaches are definitely different. Clearwater is very busy. It takes 4 million visitors a year. It's absolutely stunning. You've got all the hotels and the Airbnbs and all the shops and everything else. The next beach south of that is Bel Air Beach and Bel Air Shores, and it's completely private. It's it's almost four miles of private beach. There's no public space there. Directly south of that is Indian Rocks Beach. That's my beach. There's only a two lane road there. It's not busy. We have no um, big uh, public parking structure. So it never really kind of swells. It still gets busy in season. Don't, don't, don't think it's not. But then it gets into four lanes and a turn lane and starts getting kind of touristy down there. And then you get into the areas that you and I think of. Treasure Island, Madeira Beach, uh, St. Pete Beach. These beaches are all beautiful, y'all. So I want to give that to you because a lot of the times people are like, oh, I love clear water but they don't want to live in an area that's very touristy so keep that in mind when you make the phone call whether it's me or anybody else that you're considering making a move in the area just know that we have an abundance i mean it's almost 17 miles of just absolutely stunning white sand sugary beaches they're incredible y'all all right last and not least number five on this list people are not nice now before i go down this rabbit hole here's what i want to say in my experience people have been wonderful our family loves it here we've been here this we're going into our fifth year we have no plans to move anywhere else we've absolutely fallen in love with tampa but here's what i'm going to say when you can look down in the comments down below you're going to find somebody who's doesn't want yankees down here wants everybody to leave wants me to leave wants me to tell everybody florida's closed i get it i understand right but that has not been my experience and most likely if you're somebody who's moving to the Tampa Bay area for the sunshine, you know, the flip-flop lifestyles, you know, to come put a tank top on and shorts on, or just to enjoy the outdoor living that the state of Florida has to offer and the Tampa Bay area, that's what you're going to find. If you're someone who's coming down um, and you're, you know, you're surrounded by people who are negative all the time, you know, and that's what you're looking for here too, you're going to find it. You're going to find negativity anywhere you you look, right? If you're looking for positivity, you're going to find that almost anywhere you look too. But here has been our experience. My, my wife, myself, and my kids have fallen in love with this community. It's incredible. I can't believe that I get to wake up and we're less than two miles from the, one of the most beautiful beaches in the entire country. We are extremely blessed. We have so many visitors that come down to the area, enjoy it, and for the most part, our experience has been good. Do we get people who are rude? The answer is yes. Will you find them? The answer is yes. Do I let them change my mindset about the, the, the opportunity that Tampa has provided me and my family? The answer is 100% not, and I wouldn't let them do it to you either. I hope this video has made a tremendous impact. We've got videos on all things Tampa Bay. You can check them out right here. We'll put two of our favorite videos right here. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.